Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a trying new makeup. We have all the products that I got from the Sephora sale, plus some stuff in PR, new makeup. You know this is gonna be a great video. <laughs> We're gonna start off with our skin today. I do have a new product from Delba. It's their double layer revitalizing serum. You already know how much I love the first spray serum. And I'm so thankful because Delba is sponsoring this portion of today's video and I cannot wait to share with you this because of my love for the first spray serum. If you love this too, you gotta try this new product. It is so good. To compare, the double serum is an advanced version of the first spray serum. Application is different. I use the double serum as skincare and prep and the first spray serum to finish makeup or refresh. So I'm gonna let you know a little bit more about this product, show you application, a little before and after. This is the Delba Double Layer Revitalizing Serum. This has two layers, just like the first spray serum. The first layer consists of plant-derived oils. It provides skin relief, locks in moisture, for 100 hour hydration, gives you beautiful glowing skin. And then the second layer is the white truffle serum, which is their signature ingredient. White truffle is a luxury antioxidant to improve skin elasticity and smooth fine lines. It is really good for anti-aging since it is an antioxidant. And just like the first spray serum, you have to shake these two together just so that they combine before application. I've been using this for seven days straight. My skin feels more supple. There's no dryness, no flaking, nothing. My skin is actually balanced. <laughs> it feels so good. It feels hydrated all day long and my skin is bouncy. It just provides the best canvas for my foundation. And I was worried about the foundation we're using today because it's on the drier side. I feel like this is the best chance that that has to work on my skin because my skin is ready to go. What I noticed when I first used this is that it has a beautiful scent. It's a citrus floral, it's really pleasant and it has been tested for sensitive skin. So if you have sensitive skin like me, it has been tested and I have no issues with any sort of reaction, sensitivity, breakouts, nothing. It has been so good on my sensitive skin. It is vegan and you can easily shop this on Amazon. I love products that are simple, easy to get here in Canada. Canada, can shop on Prime, comes next day. I just love Delba, its availability, the products I've tried. This serum, I love just as much as that spray that I've been raving about. So I'm gonna show you it applied to my skin. You can see my skin before. I do feel hydrated from the seven days application, but it does give an instant glow to the skin as soon as you apply it. What you wanna do before each use is shake the bottle three to five times and take two to three pumps of the serum on your palm and have it absorb into your skin. This is that beautiful truffle glow. I have you nice and zoomed in so you can see how my skin looks up close. We film a natural light here. It is beautiful and I thought it best to show you this applied now. We're gonna move on to the eyes and then you'll watch how it absorbs to the skin and my face will be prepped. This is all we're gonna do for foundation prep for this video so you can see how foundation glides on. But this is where we're starting off. I love it. It feels so good, looks good. And if you're a fan of the first spray serum like I am, you will absolutely love the double layer revitalizing serum from Delba. You can get them on Amazon. I will have them linked below. So thank you so much to Delba for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I cannot wait for you guys to try this product. It is such a good serum, perfect skin prep and I think you guys are gonna absolutely love it. So thank you so much to Delba for sponsoring this portion of today's video. And we're gonna move on to the eyes. For eyes today, we have a new eyeshadow palette and some new brushes. So the brushes I have are from the brand Alter Ego. They also sent some eyeshadow palettes, which look really beautiful. But for today's look, I really wanted to try this. It's from Stylevana and it's from the brand Clio. This is the Scoop of Shade eyeshadow palette from Clio. I just felt like doing a really light look on the eyes today with focus on liner, which I thought would be really beautiful. So we're gonna dip into this. I've never tried Clio Cosmetics and I've never tried Alter Ego brushes. So this is a try new makeup of all things new. Starting off with an Alter Ego number two brush. Dip into this scoop of ice cream. So cute. We're gonna use that for our crease shade today. Brows and lids are already prepped. I'll have that link below in case you wanna know. Just my typical products for those two things. Nothing new to try there. Has good pigmentation so far and blending out easily. These brushes are nice too. They're not the softest brushes I've ever used, but they're not bad either. I'd say these are comparable to some of the Morphe ones that I've tried in the past. 
because it blended so effortlessly, I feel like I wanna highlight my brow bone a little bit. So I'm gonna take this large matte shade here. This is the Alter Ego number no. five brush. It's a large shader brush. So far I'm impressed with the formula. And these brushes aren't bad either. They're doing their job. So for fun, I'm gonna take a little bit of this pink matte shade and put that in the outer corner. Blend it into the crease slightly. I just wanna add a little bit of that pink to the look. So I'm just gonna blend it through what we just did. It's gonna lighten it slightly, but I like that wash of pink. So you can see that pink right there has a little bit of sparkle to it. I'm gonna take my finger and apply that to the lid. And then the shade below it, I think we're gonna apply on top for a little bit more sparkle to amp it up. But I definitely want this to be a pink leaning look. That's really pretty. It's super soft. You can call this like a sorbet type of eye. I love that. Maybe I don't wanna add that sparkle. This particular color feels incredible, but the other ones I weren't applying with my finger, but I love the consistency and texture of this shadow. I'm actually really impressed <laughs> with how this is. I've never used anything from Clio, so if you've used products from the brand, let me know. This is my first time. I'm really enjoying this palette so far. So I love that subtle sparkle. It's really pretty with those colors. Everything is so diffused. I love when eye makeup is easy. <laughs> and then to deepen things ever so slightly, I'm gonna go in with this shade here along the lash line with my Alter Ego 7 brush. It's a pencil brush little bit bigger of a pencil brush than I'm used to using. So I might end up going in with the number eight, which looks like this, just to line my lash line a little bit better. But I do want some dimension in this outer corner. So we're gonna start with this brush first. Key being soft. I don't want too much definition. I just want this to be a very soft, very blended eye look. If these lighter shades blend this well, I'd be so interested in seeing what other kind of palette color stories they have. The softness of this, I don't think I've ever done something so soft and blended. It's subtle, but I love that. I was gonna add more colors just to amp it up, but I don't feel like we always need that. I think like this sort of look is so pretty and have it understated, I don't know. I personally really like that. I know sometimes I'm very light-handed. This is something I genuinely would wear because I don't wanna wear glam on a spring day. <laughs> I was going to mention this in my monthly favorites. It is my favorite liner I've currently used. It's from Charlotte Tilbury and I've had this in my to try pile. I thought it was just a pencil. I didn't know it was a liquid. This is the Feline Flick Eye Pen in Panther. This is incredible. Let me show you the tip of this. It is longer, it is a felt tip, not a brush tip, which is not typically my preference, but this is black, matte, and the wear on this surpasses any liner I've used. I've had literal tears coming down on top of this liner and it does not budge, which I can appreciate because my eyes are so watery. I'm gonna do a quick liner with this. Have to go quiet because this can be hard, but you'll see how black and matte this is. It's just the perfect pen liner. And then for mascara, I have the brown version of the Tower 28 Make Waves, which is in the shade Drift. I used to love this mascara. So I was looking for a brown one and this one came in a little set. I've also been really enjoying a brown liquid liner. Now I'm gonna have to investigate the Charlotte Tilbury and see if they do a brown one. I really want a light brown liquid liner. So if you guys have any suggestions, please leave them down below in the comment section. I don't want it to be shiny. I want it to be pigmented, but not a brown black. It needs to be brown, which this mascara looks black to me. Should I have got the YSL Lash Clash? I didn't, and then it sold out during the Sephora sale. Now I'm regretting that. I can't tell that this is brown. Well, that's slightly disappointing. Still a good mascara, but honestly, I really want it to be lighter than this. I'm gonna switch paths here. I've been really enjoying the Effortless collection from Velour, and I wanted to try this style. It's a stripped, and I like how it's heavy on the outer corner, but still very natural looking. That's my favorite kind of lash is something that looks natural. See how subtle those are? I really like that. If you're new to lashes, or you just like a more subtle lash like me, I love the Effortless line. So definitely go check them out. So we've spent time doing our eyes and as you can see, my skin has that beautiful truffle glow still from that Delba serum. It has absorbed into my skin. So I still have that glow remaining, which I love, but it doesn't feel greasy or oily or anything that's gonna interfere with my foundation. I just feel hydrated and look glowy. 
I love how this looks like on my skin. So now I feel confident that we can use our next product, <laughs> which I've heard so many mixed things about, mostly bad. I've seen two people with good reviews of this. So I'm honestly unsure how this is gonna go for me, but this is the Urban Decay Face Bond Waterproof Foundation up to 24 hour wear with 3% niacinamide and can't feel coverage. I got the shade 11. Number 11, if you don't know, I love when my foundation shade is my favorite number. So this should be a good color match for me. I check by swatches. I don't typically go by what it's described as, but this swatch looked pretty good for me. So this is the one we're gonna go with. They do have a patented dispensing technology, as you can see. So it dispenses very little product and it just squeezes out. It looks really interesting, like a little needle tip applicator. Using a clean BK Beauty 101 brush, I'm gonna use this to apply. I hear this dries down extremely fast. So everything I know about this going in, I feel like I'm giving it the best chance possible because I'm not going in too blind to this. So I'm going to apply a little bit on the back of my hand. Let's show you how this dispenses out. You can dispense as little or as much as you like. It's not really moving anywhere. I'm gonna put a little bit more than that on the back of my hand. I'm gonna work this fast into the left side of my skin and hope that I like this foundation. It is self-setting too, so we don't even need to try powder today. So that is one very light, quick layer. You can still see so far that glow peeking through and this is supposed to be matte and have some coverage to it. So I'm going to apply the same amount to this side of the face just so that we can even things out. And then I'm gonna do the second layer to build up the coverage. That's already setting down on the skin. It doesn't feel dry though, because my skin already feels really moisturized from that serum. So I'm not too worried about this being too drying. It does feel lightweight and it looks slightly blurring. I do need to build this evenly though, because it is so quick drying, I feel like that being said, it can look patchy, but we haven't built it up. I'm gonna take the time and do this foundation justice and build this up properly and see how it looks with the two evenly distributed layers. I do feel like I'm using more than I typically would with the foundation just to build up the coverage and make it look even. <laughs> Cause that's the only issue that I'm having because it is so quick drying, it's hard to make this look even. In all honesty, this doesn't look the best on my skin. It doesn't look horrible by any means, but this isn't one that I would personally recommend to you guys right off the bat. I do feel like I have other foundations that look better, but also ones that look worse. This isn't the worst looking, but also not the best. I don't think it looks that bad on my skin. I do feel like I need concealer though for these spots that I just felt this would be more coverage just because of how fast it sets i feel like it can gather it's one of those foundations that you kind of got a baby as i said do i look horrible i don't think so but is it the best my skin has looked i don't think so either <laughs> so i'm gonna have to keep playing around with this i'm not blown away like some other foundations i've been trying lately this looks and is performing average i feel shade match is good though i'm happy with the shade i don't feel like i need to set this with powder at all so those claims are true it's just application for me is just a little bit of a challenge so i'm gonna go ahead and conceal with my full coverage hourglass concealer because i feel like i need it with this foundation and i did want to try using creams on top of this i could be regretting that decision but that's something that's important to me to see how creams play on top of this because that also would be a deciding factor. This would be lovely though for summer if it does hold up nicely. I think this foundation is more geared towards those with oily skin. So let me know what your skin type is if you've used this. I don't hate it, but I don't love it quite yet. We'll see how it wears. I could love it as this wears because sometimes that happens. Now that my concealer is on, I'm liking it a little bit more. It does look blurring though. So I'll hand it to Urban Decay for that because it does claim do a little bit of blurring and I have not put any powder and my skin looks like this. My pores are there. Like I have pores and texture as you can see, but they're not as prominent as sometimes I feel. So I do feel like that kind of powder technology inside is there for sure with this, which makes me think that those with oily skin would maybe like this a little bit more. Then from my Sephora order, I do have their new Sephora collection contour stick and I got this shade light to medium. This is very cool tone. We'll see how this works. I have a BK Beauty 109. 
my favorite for cream and I'm curious to see if this foundation lifts. We might have to bring out the repair kit for this. I'm gonna start with a little bit, very cool tone. I'm not sure how I feel about this cream one. It's not lifting, but I just feel like maybe the color of the powder one that I've used is a little bit better of a match. I do feel like I have to set underneath my eyes though. So I might use a little bit of powder at the end since I am adding a little bit of cream. So starting with that, and then I'm gonna go in with a blush from Bosma, and this is the red one that I've been raving about. I love this color. It's the color Cherry Red. It is so pretty, looks super intimidating, but trust the process. Hopefully this formula, again, is compatible with this foundation, but so far so good. Yeah, we're not having any lifting, so. Foundation formula, even though it self sets, everything is going on top beautifully. I'd love to know if you've tried this foundation. I'm not hating it as much as some other people, but I can definitely see what other reviews are saying about how it sets, just because it is so fast on the skin. We got that red flushed cheek, which I'm a huge fan of. I love a red blush. I think it's super flattering on every skin tone. And this formula is so nice because I feel like it grips the skin really nicely and wears long. I got a new shade of the Sephora Micro Smooth Powder to set underneath my eyes. Hopefully it's not too light. I'm assuming this is a reformulation because this does say new on Sephora. So we're gonna give it a try. I love the one that I have in medium. So I hope they did not change this formula too much. I know a lot of brands are taking out the talc. I haven't looked at the ingredients in this though, so I will not assume, but I know that's a common thing that's happening. I feel like that airbrushed my under eye. I'm really glad I got this shade. It's shade 15. It is a fair shade, but I think for underneath my eye, it's super flattering. I'm actually gonna take this just in my T-zone slightly, even out that color, not necessarily to set anything because I don't feel like this foundation needs it. And then maybe to clean up this section here, I brought it a little low. Very happy I got this. And then in PR, I got the new Fenty Beauty highlighter plus their highlighter brush, which we're gonna use today. I have the shade Prosecco 02 to show you. I love the packaging of this. I think it's so cool. I just like the effect it gives, depending on how the light hits. And this is what the shade looks like. So this is a powder highlight, and the brush looks like this. Fairly large for a highlight brush I feel, but we're gonna give it a go. This powder, very little pressure needed. Slightly tap in your brush. This is as little as I could go and it's still probably gonna be too much for me. When I first used this, I was like, wow. So I know this is the bare minimum of powder <laughs> to pick up. I need to tap off too and you still get that beautiful glow to the skin. I don't like a stripe. This highlight, can really be intense. I feel like it's really pretty on the skin, but very, very intense. Where was this in 2016? <laughs> because truly this can go very blinding if you're looking for that kind of formula. And even though it's a powder, I feel like it does sit on my skin quite nicely. I think it works for my skin. It doesn't look powdery. And I really like the color of the Prosecco shade. So very happy about this color for my skin tone. And then to quickly finish off the eyes before we move on to lips, I'm just gonna take that shade we used in the very outer corner on the Alter Ego 8 brush, which we have yet to use. I'm just gonna concentrate this on the very outer third, just creating a little bit of a shadow, some depth in the outer third of the eye. Then I'm gonna use that Tower 28 brown mascara on my lower lashes to complete the eyes. Actually, I'm gonna wipe off this brush. And I'm gonna put a little bit of this shimmery shade in the inner corner just to brighten things up. The subtle pink in this look really brings out the green in my eyes, I feel. So I really love that about this look. I'm gonna hit the lower lashes just with a touch of this mascara. And I've never tried this brand before. It's Kulfi. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I got it in that Clean Me Up kit from Sephora Favorites. And this is a brown liner. It looks brown. So we're gonna put this on my waterline. I'm always looking for new eyeliners, see how well they 
last in my waterline since I do have watery eyes. And this one actually looks brown to me. On my lips, I did have the new Ula Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment in Strawberry Sorbet. I almost forgot. I do want a little bit of this Sephora Collection Bronzer, which is gonna set that cream that we put on the face because we added that on top of the self-setting foundation. So this is essential. I have a BK Beauty 103 brush. I'm just going to lightly dust this on. This is in the shade two from the Sephora collection in Beach Bum Tan. This looks very, very warm. I'm just gonna add that warmth back to the skin. I don't wanna overdo it with this because this is still on the cooler side for a look. I do wanna set those creams in place. I was worried this was gonna be too dark. I don't think it is. This bronzer is way less pigmented than I thought it was gonna be. The consistency is very smooth and it's warm. It added a touch of warmth that I was looking for. So I feel like completed it nicely. It doesn't look patchy. So I don't wanna to go too overboard with that because we know I can go there. So now I'm going to use my new lip liner from Freck. Haven't checked out much of Freck Beauty and this is such a good lip liner. It's thin and it wears incredibly. It's also creamy and goes on beautifully. It's the Makeout Club Nude Muse Lip Liner and I got the shade five. I actually went back and bought two more shades. That is how much I love this lip liner. So I couldn't wait to share this product with you guys. It's gonna be in a favorite. It is that good. It says it's a cool tone brown. This looks warm on me. It is dark too. So I went back for a couple of the lighter shades. This is good for more definition. I've worn this with just that Ulla Henriksen and you can see when that lip balm wears off, I am left with a line. That's how much this wears. So it's good if you kind of blend it a bit. Then I also have a new lipstick to try. It's from Queen Musia. I'm not sure how to say the name of this, but we have Madame Bovary, which is a pink. And the packaging of this is so cute. I was so excited for these lipsticks. Like, look at that. Doesn't this fit the theme so well? I just feel like everything has that kind of sherbet, ice cream sort of vibe. And this is such a pretty pink. So this is gonna lighten things up. Look at that, it's actually bright. I love this color of pink. It's a matte, it's pigmented, cute packaging. So this is where we're gonna go ahead and blend it in. I was gonna do this, but changing direction, I think this would be so pretty. I haven't shown this for trying new makeup yet. It's the Patrick Ta Lip Gloss. It's plumping in the shade Pouty. This will lighten it up a bit and just give that plumpness and blend everything in, which is what I'm looking for. It has a subtle shimmer to it as well. Just gonna make sure this all melts together. And because this foundation is on the drier side, I feel like this is kind of an essential step. This is the first spray serum, which you guys know I love. I'm almost done this bottle. You need to shake this up as well. Just two to three spritz will do. But you know I like more. This is just gonna add that glow back in. It's gonna melt that foundation more into my skin, kind of seal everything. We'll have a little bit more glow, which I love. I'm going to go off camera, fix up my hair, get ready to come back, and we'll discuss all these products further. I am back, here is the completed look. I feel like this is a really pretty ice cream look for spring, I don't know. I'm loving the tones of this. Lip products, I'm huge fan, especially of these. This I do like as a hydrating lip treatment. It's just the smell of strawberry in this one. Is not my favorite strawberry? It's not bad, but I think this smells like fruit roll up or something. It's very kitty <laughs> to me is the best way to describe that. But I love how it looks and how it's more of a pinky red sort of tint to my lips. And then all of these, I highly recommend. I love this pink, how vibrant it is. And I love the packaging. It's super cute, fits the look, fits the theme. I picked these products out hoping to create kind of a look like this and it all went together so well. So I'm so happy <laughs> right now when things like that happen. And then the Freck Beauty lip liners, I already went back for more. Check out this formula if you need a lip liner right now. That's what I recommend to you. It is so good, so long wearing, so creamy, and I love how thin it is. You can get really precise with your lip line. This from Patrick Ta, I can still feel plumping my lips. You want that juicy lip look? This is such a pretty color to just lighten stuff. It's a topper for me. So that's what I use it as. Just a little bit in the center and you can see it's really making my lips full. Sephora collection, stealing my heart. Yet again, I love the powder. I thought it blurred my under eyes. I'm so happy that I got a lighter shade for my under eye. 
these two products I need to test out more. Granted, I did use them fairly lightly. I didn't want to go overboard. They both blended well. I just don't know tonally if either are my perfect shade, especially since I found House Labs bronzer. It's hard. It's honestly going to be hard <laughs> for me to find anything I like more than that. So I will test this out some more off camera as well as the contour stick. I don't typically contour that often, but the formula, if you do, I did think it was a good formula. Blush and highlighter, both are beautiful. I don't know if everyone's gonna love the Fenty Beauty though because it is so intense, very intense. And I did it as light as possible <laughs> on my cheeks and it still gave a fairly good glow to the skin. You can see some of my texture highlighted from that sort of highlight. That's why I much prefer adding glow with a spray because then my skin, I like that sort of glow better than seeing any sort of product, if that makes sense. The red blush from Bosma is my favorite cream red blush that I've used. I like this even more than the Refi. If you didn't get that during the holiday kit that they had, I really love the Bosma one and think you would enjoy it if you're looking for a red blush and it will suit any skin tone. I'm disappointed in the Tower 28 mascara, not because of the formula, because you already know I love it. It doesn't look brown on my eyes. I'm still in search of a brown mascara and I'm kicking myself for not getting the Lash Clash. The new brushes that I used, I think the Fenty one is nice, a little big for me in the shape. There's just others I think I'm gonna reach for more than this one, not bad by any means. And I think it works perfectly for their formula, how it's designed, so I see why they made it like this. The Alter Ego brushes, I like how they're all numbered and plain. I just love a brush that I can just reach for, know the number, and there's nothing too fancy about them. I like basic brushes like this and they all work nicely, so nothing bad to say about those. I'm super impressed with this Clio eyeshadow palette and wanna try out more from the brand. I think this blended out extremely well. And because these are such light colors, I really wanna try out something deeper from the brand, but this formula is so beautiful. So I hope they have more that I can check out. I wanna keep you guys updated on this Colfi eyeliner and see if it wears in my waterline. Kind of a deal breaker for me if this wears off. I am in the market though for some new eyeliner. I'm looking for the best one. So if you have any recommendations for the waterline, please let me know in the comment section below. The Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation. I'm going to have to get back to you on this. For first impression, I kind of have mixed feelings on this. I don't think it's horrible. I actually think my skin looks pretty good. I could have probably put a little bit more on my forehead compared to the rest of my face because I feel like I put a little less there. Overall, I think I picked out the right color. It does feel lightweight. It's not transferring. I'll keep you posted on the wear of this how I feel like it looks throughout the day. I could very well like this foundation more as it wears on my skin, just because of how self-setting it is initially. I feel like this could truly be one of those ones that the more you wear, the better it gets. It's just that initial application, if you are drier, you need to prep your skin like I did, truly prep that skin before going in because this dries down so fast. Quickest dry down that I've ever tried in a foundation is this one right here. So just be mindful of that. Last new product that I tried out today is the Delba Double Layer Revitalizing Serum with White Truffle. I love this as you already know <laughs> from my experience in the beginning of the video. It just works for my skin. It gives that glow even after it's absorbed to my skin. My skin is glowing with this. So I love it for skin prep. I love it for underneath foundation. I tried that with the Studio Fix the other day. I need to show you that combination. I was actually gonna wear that for this video just to show you how good that looked, but I decided not to. <laughs> So I wanted to try out that Urban Decay. I love the formula. It's improved the hydration of my skin. I don't feel dry. I was getting dry there for a little minute, you guys know. <laughs> but my skin is back to normal. It feels hydrated and I don't have any dryness throughout the day, which is really nice. It keeps my skin hydrated and I just feel like my skin is looking so good with it. It complements the First Spray Serum, which I already love. And I think you guys are gonna absolutely love it. If you haven't checked out the First Spray Serum, check out that too. I will have the Double Layer Revitalizing Serum link below as well for you guys to check out. You can shop it on Amazon. So thanks again to Delba for sponsoring a portion of this video. This is gonna be everything for my trying new makeup. I know it was a long one, but we had so many products from my Sephora haul, from PR, all the new in this video to test out for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed the look. I love how it turned out. Feels perfect for spring. Can't wait to wear it out today. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you guys in my next video.